the past, Clinton County, Missouri was the western edge of the United States. Situated between two emerging cities, Kansas City and St. Joseph, Clinton County benefited from their growth. The Pony Express, the Gold Rush, and Western Migration brought people through the county, but the population that settled here put it on the map. Plattsburgh became the beef capital of the world. Lathrop was the major supplier of mules for the Boer Wars and World War I. Five railroads crisscrossed the county, and the nation's first north-south highway ran through Cameron, Plattsburgh, and Trimble on its way to Kansas City. Clinton County was home to David Rice Atchison, president for a day, James Harvey Birch, Missouri Supreme Court judge, Willis J. Wynn, president of the Cleveland Federal Reserve, and James Marshall, early leader of the Manhattan Project. Here are more family histories of Clinton County. The Saga of James Mallon was submitted by Janelle Mallon West, great great niece of James Mallon. James, or Jimmy as he was called, was the first Mallon to come to the United States during the California Gold Rush of 1849. He was a young man of 21 one of eight children. Some family members believe that he came to California by sea around the southern tip of South America. He had to be brave and determined to make the long trip uh, alone and to leave his parents and siblings back in County Fernagh, Ireland. James does not appear in the 1850 California census, but he does appear in the 1860 census in San Joaquin County, Elkhorn Township, which is north of Stockton, near the town of Lido. He worked as a laborer on a farm owned by Edna Benson. She had several farm laborers working for her. Edna was originally from Missouri, and the family believes this is why James decided to settle in Missouri. During this time, James also prospected for gold. James acquired a considerable amount of money during the gold rush days. As the Civil War grew and intensified, James decided to go back to Ireland. I can understand his decision to not get involved in a situation involving slavery. The Irish also felt prejudices when they came to this country, especially if they were Catholic. When the war showed signs of terminating, James returned to the United States and through the Homestead Act, moved west, staking his claim in the fertile grazing and farming lands of Missouri. James brought his mother, Anne, with him. Anne didn't live long after arriving. She died in 1867. James homesteaded near Starfield in Clinton County two and a half miles northeast of Gower. He had a farm of 300 acres and had his farm well supplied with livestock and machinery. He was said to have been a very eccentric man, living alone in a small house, but he took great pride in his livestock and farm. The demise of James Mallon came on September 17, 1878, in, on a Saturday evening, when a passerby found him dead close to his barn. It is believed that he was killed for his money and his gold, possibly buried on the farm. James's overcoat was found with a long rip in the back and a fresh cut in the front, and the lapel was stained with blood. The barn walkway was splattered with blood. Investigators had the impression that before his death, James had engaged in a severe struggle. Mallon had a bitter enemy that he had recently been forced to vacate from the property that James owned. He had often stated that he was afraid this man might kill him. When searching James's bedroom, three loaded revolvers were found under his bed 
which reveals that he was living in fear. Several days after James' body was discovered, the man that everyone thought had killed James was shot and killed. Nothing was ever proven in either of the deaths. Since James was a bachelor, his land and money was inherited by his brothers and sisters back in Ireland. This is how many of the Mallons were able to come to America. My great-grandfather, John Mallon, a brother of James, came over with his family and settled around Gower and then eventually bought land around Osborne, Missouri. This is where the younger children were raised and eventually some went to California to live. My own grandfather, who was also named John, bought land two and a half miles northeast of Plattsburgh and built a home. There he raised three children, Mary Mallon Rooney, Thomas Mallon, and my dad, James Mallon. Eventually, since my parents had a large family of nine children, they moved into the family home when my grandparents moved into Plattsburgh. The home is no longer there, but this is a picture of what it looked like when we all grew up. James was 50 years old when he was murdered, and he and his mother are buried in the old Catholic cemetery at Easton called the Kessler Cemetery. Not all of James' siblings came to America. Some stayed in Ireland. I am delightful that a group of people are restoring the stones in the Kessler Cemetery. I hope that the old Kessler Cemetery will become more accessible to the public since you have to go across private property to get to it. The road was closed when the cemetery was abandoned many years ago. At one time, there were quite a few Mallons in Clinton County, but unfortunately, the number has dwindled. There are many descendants, but not with the Mallon name. There are a long line of James Mallons in my family. My dad was James, and also my brother is James. My brother, James Mick Mallon, has visited the Kessler Cemetery and also visited Ireland, Ireland, where the Mallons originated. My brother has a large family in Iowa, and min, many of them have passed the name of James Mallon on down. All the descendants have a great respect for the first James Mallon, who was brave and determined to venture into unknown territory for a better life. I feel that his story could almost be made into a Western movie of a courageous young man who helped pave a way for those of us that were to come after. His memory will stay with all of us, and the story told to generations to come of James Mallon, the first Mallon to come to the United States during the gold rush. <laughs>